Although everybody does know about this story, I try not to discuss it because it leads to confrontations. Tahira Chakatai has lived in Salford for nearly 15 years. Close friends know him as TJ, but he also goes by another name. I am formerly known on the streets as Tahira Chakatai, but to make myself more credible, I use my equity name, which is AJ Valiant. In the early 90s, TJ was in a boy band called 911 and performed under his stage name, AJ Valiant. I've had an extensive career in singing in boy bands and as a solo singer or a solo act. Before he was confined to his wheelchair, AJ enjoyed performing at charity events regularly. TJ has an extensive list of mental and physical disabilities. My disabilities are literally listed from A to Z, so I'll go through the more major ones. I have autism, which affects um, everything from communication to uh, loud noises, um, certain spatial awareness, senses to certain sounds at a close or at a certain angle. And then I've got sensory processing disorders on top of that. They stop me from regulating emotionally or properly. It affects the way I process light, uh, which is why I wear dark glasses, because the retinas are burnt out. I have arthritis throughout my back and three prolapse discs. I have arthritis in both hips, arthritis in both knees, and arthritis in both ankles. I have um, sensory dyspraxia, which is one of the rarities in Britain. Sensory dyspraxia stops an average person from feeling pain. So for example, three years ago, I broke the bone in my leg, the femur, and was walking on a broken leg for a week until the leg turned black and I had to go to hospital. And I'd realized I'd broke my leg. TJ's conditions leave him unable to perform on stage anymore, but he still finds time to help others with their musical aspirations. AJ Valiant's achievements go back to boy band days but more recently, I'm well known for working with the Heroes Project, where I produced music for autistic adults who had great vocal talent. And my claim to fame is producing a track called A Thousand Years for Scott James, who was a finalist, autistic finalist, in The X Factor, who actually got a number one hit with Amazon. I decided to go blue today. I managed to cover all the balding bits, so yeah. And it's like a brick. <laughs> Aquamarina. <laughs> the right there. Isn't that lovely? Would you like to just, you know, to get the general environment, would you like to take a picture of what happens when you park your car? TJ has always tried to help others in need. In 2006, he told the local press that his landlord, Salix Holmes, were allowing their tenants to live in unsafe conditions. In 2006, when I found out that the elderly and vulnerable were living in conditions that were uninhabitable, they had damp electrical problems, they had condensation problems, windows that were falling to pieces. So I decided, right, enough is enough. Um, it's time that I publicise this and to write the document for the advertiser, I used the document published in 2001, which was the BRE report for Canon Hussey Court. And it actually showed some alarming evidence that if the building wasn't refurnished by 2005, in 2006, that building would start to fall. But what TJ didn't know at the time was that this would be the start of a lengthy battle between himself and Salix Holmes. 
I was stabbed on two occasions, which was the 25th of August 2007 and the 27th of August 2007, to which, to date, the police have never investigated. These stabbings were the result of a false rumour that had been spread around the local community that TJ was a paedophile. Stabbing happened outside of my front door. At the time I could walk, um, I, with a walking stick, but I could walk. Two guys, one came in front, one came behind, called me a paedophile outright, um, told me that they were going to kill me, and for all intention purposes, I actually believed them. They presented what looked like a standard, you know, carving knife which was about nine inches in length. I didn't even know I'd been stabbed. I, I only found out I was stabbed because the back of my shirt felt wet and they'd literally uh, slashed my back where I've got 144 stitches. The uh, paramedics called the police because when anyone gets stabbed or shot, the police are automatically involved. No police came to see me. No police came to do a statement. Um, and I just felt that I was abandoned. Only two days later, TJ was attacked again by the same two assailants. The second stabbing, which was by the same pair, I was on the way to the doctors in Lower Broughton to have, it, quite ironically, my stitches taken out from the first stabbing. And I was stabbed uh, repeatedly in the back again and once in the side. Again, I was taken to hospital. They made another complaint to the police saying that this is the second time that he's been admitted to Salford Royal. We need something done immediately. Again, no police came to investigate. Two months after the assault, TJ was made aware of an email that had been forwarded to over 2,000 tenants on five different estates in Salford by none other than a Salix Homes employee. I believe, in my opinion, as a result of uh, me advertising Salix Homes as a poor landlord in Salford Council, an email was circulated to over 2,000 tenants by a Mr. Adrian Palmer, who worked between Salford Council and Salix Homes, had spread an email that they knew was vexatious about me assaulting a minor that was under 16 years old. TJ only has a copy of the email from October, but he is adamant that Salix had sent multiple emails in the months previous. The documents we found out were shared over a period of months from about, we now know it's from July, through to about September. So this one was just shared on October the 22nd, but there'd been many before it and many after it I wasn't aware of. However, TJ can't prove this, as Alex claims to have conveniently misplaced their internal investigation. On top of everything else, as part of their ongoing legal battle, Salix took TJ to court for eviction in 2017, but they didn't get the outcome they were hoping for. No findings or admissions have been made in respect of the allegations against the defendant. In other words, I was found guilty of absolutely nothing. So I was taken to court for eviction and the court order I came out with was not against me, but against my landlord. And it actually states quite clearly that the PTSD arose following a serious assault and knife injuries in 2007. Accusations were made against him in 2007 when he arrived in the Salford area that he was, and I'm not even going to say the word, I think I just prefer to point it out. It was also a reason why he appears to have been targeted in 2007 assault. In fact, the judge recognised that not only was Salek's housing entirely unsuitable for TJ's needs, but the rumours were leaving him open to further abuse. The same rumours that Salex had spread in the email. The judge made his decision in 2017, but to this day, TJ has still not been rehoused. After his name was tarnished, TJ was forced to find other ways to help those in need. He now uses his alter ego to organise goth rock evenings, ARA. Aura is a rock goth EBM alternative 80s night that's held at a working church, Sacred Trinity Church in Salford. The types of people that you tend to see at Aura are the weird and wonderful. These are the people that are too frightened to go out because they live a different lifestyle, like to dress a certain way. The, in fact, the people that come to Aura are those who don't like to fit into the stereotype of being normal.
Me and Sharon uh, stamp hands. Sharon takes the money. I stamp people's hands with my fancy stamp. And we help introduce people who are nervous. Maybe it's the first time they've come. They've got mental disability. So I do a lot to take my mind off the problems that I've got, but all under the disguise of AJ Valiant. I couldn't live in Salford without him being around the corner. And I think it's the same for him. He's out there. He's colourful, he has a gift of the gab and he knows how to use it. So I just tend to sit back and watch it and it's so funny. <laughs>